difficult to get hard for the local elections. Although I suppose the Tories losing a thousand seats, yeah, mm. Mm, yeah, we're getting there. But only five hundred of those gains were by the Labour Party. Um, big showing for the Lib Dems with four hundred. But I mean, I do. You kind of have to write off anything the Lib Dems do in the local elections because they will just tell you whatever you want to hear. Oh, you 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 want you you oppose <laughs> the construction of the bypass. Well, we'll stop the bypass. Oh, you you want the bypass? Yeah, well, we'll build the bypass. <laughs> don't worry. Well, don't worry. We will build the bypass. Uh, housing, housing. No, 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 no housing. They will literally tell you what. There is no cohesive ideology. They just tell you whatever you want to think. And so at local elections, they do quite well. <laughs> <laughs> the Greens, however. There's a, there's an interesting story there, isn't there, Ben? Because mm. they they had they had a pretty good showing, and particularly in the context, I think Labour five hundred Greens were more than a hundred, weren't they? Getting close to two hundred, I think, or some, something like that. The numbers are irrelevant, but it's a good showing for them. But I think the thing is, is that like, and again, the Lib Dems, you're right, like they are shameless. But the what we can see from Lib Dems and from Green is that like they have a ground game. And they are attuned to local issues. Obviously, you can't trust Lib Dems. That's as another as way of putting them. what I just said. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust them as far as you can fucking throw them. Yeah, too. But right. like, they understand what different communities want and need. Whereas Keir Starmer's cutting about being like, "Vote for us for council. Don't worry, we'll sort out the NHS." And it's like, yeah, what? What, 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 what do you think the council does? <laughs> Literally, they're, just like, they're there for bins and potholes, mate. Like, uh, they're not going to like the, the local councils going out and like fighting fucking inflation. Like, they, they can't do that. They don't have the power to do it. So the People's like... Republic of Medway. Right. <laughs> there is an interesting line here, though, isn't there? Because uh, you, there's there's the political angle. There's the, the ideological, theoretical political angle of purging the left from the Labour Party, right? Mm. The, de the massive downside of that is that with the big groundswell of membership that Jeremy Corbyn introduced to the Labour Party was this huge wave of volunteers who would go out and knock doors, mm. distribute leaflets like canvas for you, etc. And those people have now left the party. Or been kicked out. Well, yes, okay. <laughs> they Aggressively yes. left Euphemistically, they've left the party. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Ben, that... they've left the party. <laughs> Is that not true? I they see have... you're not reading your show notes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Madelson comes yeah. out with a gun yeah. behind me. Uh, <laughs> that dog, Tower Hamlet. Uh. He was there actually with a shot. You know, you know Mandelson when I went to a Labour conference this year <laughs> the first person I saw was Peter Mandelson really like, and I was like I hope you tapped him up I was like Peter <laughs> <laughs> love to see you again brother <laughs> my guy my guy Peter solidarity <laughs> Ben so talk to me a little bit more about how the Greens and the Independents uh, did so I think it's quite interesting is that we've had over the last I mean maybe decade we've had like various different like green swells that have always promised to be this like tidal wave but have never quite crested and part of that can maybe be explained by the rise of Corbynism um, obviously kind of like pre you know in, in the sort of like Ed Miliband years Greens were really the only people that were like bashing the drum of anti-austerity so they, it was a natural home for a lot of people and then when Corbyn sort of rose up people drifted towards there also the Greens kind of as everyone did went a bit batshit during Brexit and were suddenly like let's rejoin and also we should have the Euro and also they didn't have to say that but <laughs> <laughs> and also let's be Portugal like br brazenly lying <laughs> Like everyone has to get an EU tattoo on their forehead. <laughs> but no one can do well. That's insane. <laughs> so it's just all, it's just all this sort of like never really quite happened for them. But now we're sort of back in back again in like the 2020, 2010 to twenty fifteen era of like a really shite like one pump and done Labour Party. And <laughs> people want a little bit more foreplay. They want a little bit more fiddle. So mm. the Greens are there, and I think that that like. <laughs> You know, speaks to that. Um, you know, they they saw huge gains across the country. What was really interesting, I think, is that like Waverley, which is so like I've lived all over the place, but when I was growing up, I spent a bit of time in East Anglia. So Waverley's like Suffolky area, I think. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we looked this. at a map. Um, <laughs> I looked at a lot of places. It's they all merge into one, but like it's just like not the kind of place that you would generally think and that we've been talking about we've been talking a lot about how the greens are going to take bristol west that mm. bangham's time is um coming to an end mercifully but <laughs> and that like carla denia who's who's the co-leader of the green party who is a councillor in bristol she's going to be the second mp and now out of nowhere suddenly it's the other co-leader adrian ramsey who has about as much charisma as keir starmer that's so fucking hell <laughs> is somehow gonna be the next wow is it gonna be the second green mp and that's gonna be for waverley so that's quite an interesting story i think another thing to mention is that they collapsed completely in brighton uh but absolutely trounced it in lewis so it's sort of you know a, a, an overall success um is that going to so they also um, have the first green run uh, council in europe as far as i'm aware 
Mm. So they want, they've got complete control. I don't know what council it is. I should have looked that up. <laughs> right. But they, 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 they have, there's now a complete green run council in Britain, and it's the first green run council in oh, well, Europe. Well, as in every single councillor is a green, is that what you're saying? Or as in, like, they have control of it. Overall control. I they Overall control, control of Brighton. Did they not? Am I, I yeah. thinking that? Did they? I thought they did, but then also. I, I, well, let's fact check this. I literally. I just. I'm going to Google, ladies I, and gentlemen. I read, I read this. You guys just, talk amongst they, yourselves. I just vibed onto Brighton. Do <laughs> deplorable things on the beach and then go home. <laughs> <laughs> counting, counting the green counselors you see. Like, this is a yeah, green city. In a different way. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and all of them under the pier. <laughs> is that Polanski? <laughs> Let's see what we get. Um, Caroline Lucas, what are you Caroline, doing here? I think Caroline Lucas said this. Yeah, man, you're not right. You're, yes. you're, sorry, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Gr Greens win first ever council outright. Green really? Party wins first ever council majority. Wow. Um, yeah. As the biggest party in Mid Suffolk District Council. Yeah, which must be Waverley. Yeah, right? it's probably uh, Waverley adjacent. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That was, that was a real <laughs> alley yeah. from Ben and me. Ah, <laughs> it, yeah, it's yeah, an so interesting we, no, fact. we got there collectively. So before their victory in Mid Suffolk, the only other Green run council, such as Brighton and Hove, was a min were minority administrations. Uh, so okay. that's the point of difference there. So it's a majority. Yeah. So everyone so, so is what a I winner. Said. Every, or, yeah, I you're you're both right. right. <laughs> you're, you're both right in different mm. ways. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you both look at me with such disdain. <laughs> like, there's no way you know this fact about the green. This fact that you gave no facts to. Like, it's just like a, a vibe. It was a vibe. It was, yeah. it was a vibe. But I think it's like it, it's quite interesting, isn't it? That like this is happening. Will, will this translate to mm. you know, something in the generals? I don't know. Um, what on on the subject of the generals though? What is also another kind of like interesting low level story is that several fairly like prominent in terms of their local area left wingers from the Labour Party who were chucked out of the Labour Party then contested as independents. So in Liverpool and in Portsmouth and then won. And that's kind of not really been picked up in the sweeping like analysis of it. I don't think it's sort of we don't need to look at it in terms of like a wide ranging like um, trend, but should give Keir Starmer pause for thought given mm. that there are some notable left wingers <laughs> that used to be Labour MPs who are now potentially going to run as independents mm -hmm. and understanding that the reason that they did that and the way that they did that is because they are part of their communities. They are intrinsic within it. And, and obviously, like we're talking about Jeremy Corbyn here. You, know, you cannot walk around Islington North with that man without being stopped by someone who he knows the name of them and their parents and their grandparents and also their aunt that lives somehow in Suffolk and <laughs> has done like stuff for all of them. And then there's a kebab shop that's got like his face all over all of the kebabs and all this. So it's like that, I think, is quite an interesting precursor to some of the like battles that we'll see. Well, Ben, I hate to tell you, but um, Keir Starmer says that the people who turned away from us during the Corbyn years and the Brexit years are coming back, <laughs> baby. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> you guys fucking suck. Ah, lucky. Um, and he will also say today when he meets with his shadow cabinet that the NHS trumps woke every day of the week. Um, that's probably why people are coming back, I guess, with insight, insights like that. No, I, I, I was being glib, but like your, your, your nuanced point is, is, is important mm. and, and accurate. But I, and I, I think we should just be cautious when we're analyzing these local elections to not over overread Labour's performance here, because mm. I think really the story is one of, of, of Tory implosion. Mm. It is it is trustonomics coming back to bite. It is party gate coming back to bite. It's Chris Pincher. It's bo the the entire Boris Johnson mm. colostomy bag of a government coming back to bite in a way you really don't want a colostomy bag to come back. And yeah, that's a defaulty colostomy <laughs> bag. That's, <laughs> that's not what it's meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I think it really is their own ineptitude. I guess this 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 is. This is the point of difference and the thing that frustrates me about Keir and I will, you know, I'll give him his due if you like in terms of political strategy, which is that instead of trying to galvanize a movement and instead of trying to put forward ideas, a belief system and bring people into that movement and sort of, you know, galvanize change in the country, he is his strategy is essentially uh Hoddle, sit on the lead, make sure I don't fuck it up too much, and they're going to implode, and I'll be able to I'll be able to get away and coast into government yeah. without having to you know do too much, without having to be too too radical, etc. And we will see if that strategy pays off. But for me, oh, for me personally, I don't really like the triangulation focus group type approach. I think a leader's job is to lead and mm -hmm. to come up with ideas that makes people want to you know join I, join a party and go move forward with it. I think it's quite impressive that for however long we've all been talking about this, we haven't mentioned coalition. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's all. That's, it's, it's quite funny. It's, it's quite funny when you like <coughs> political journalism is like the local elections were on fr- uh, the results were on Friday, and every single thing is like, well, now uh, all everyone's talking about is the Labour coalition government that's coming. <laughs> Will it be with the Lib Dems or SNP? <laughs> and that's like, mm. and it's like it, analysis is just pivoted to that. And I think like an important caveat to that is that these local elections excluded a large majority a large part of the country it was just England wasn't just it? England oh, yeah. it, it, it assumes all of England it assumes no change in Scotland which just isn't going to happen like Labour will win seats in mm. in Scotland so I think that's like an important caveat to the discussion of like these local elections weren't beat like 10 out of 10 amazing for Starmer but it could swing the it, it, he could do better but then thing. I guess the flip side of that argument is that the, the local elections that just happened four years ago were at the like depths of Theresa May's like floundering mm. and Keir managed to up the vote percentage by 0.1 percent like yeah you know, and uh, at the, the depths of <clears throat> Theresa May's floundering but also at the depths of like the, the very much the beginning of the end for Corbynism and so like the idea that in these four years in three years of Starmer's leadership in like throwing off every single thing that he allegedly believes in, in like expelling half of the party, what he's achieved is 0.1%. I think that's a vote. pretty good trade. I don't know, I don't know about <laughs> you, but yeah. This is like if I invested in stocks. Oh, this is what would happen. why I don't. Because I'm a fucking idiot. And I'd be like, well, wow, that's a positive. Yeah, but it's Nailed. a gain. It's a, yeah. We're in the black. Can we eat for a week? No, no. but look what I had did. And it's just like, that's what Starmer is doing. And he's just wandering around. I think the, the idea that like after all came out and we kind of looked at the adjusted percentages and it's like Labour squeaking in to a minority and you're right in that like it's not reflective of the entire entirety of like you know the people that are going to be voting but I think it's like fairly indicative of the fact that this triangulation this sort of like oh just hold on because Keir Starmer for the first like two years even now to a certain extent his whole shtick was I'm not Boris Johnson I'm not Jeremy Corbyn mm. and it's like okay well, that kind of worked for a little bit particularly yeah. when we we're all in who like, are you yeah <laughs> like, right it's just like what do you what uh-huh. do you stand for beyond and it's just like we're not going to repeal anything because that would be a lot of work <laughs> We're gonna keep like we're gonna keep everything frozen at the rates that it is now when none of you can afford anything. We're gonna chat a little bit about the NHS maybe for a bit. We might wheel Wes out again just to like <laughs> say some shit. And then like and then what? I want to feed in the Labour spin lines at this point, as I feel it's only fair to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that uh the sort of the the three step strategy was to introduce Keir to the public mm. to expose Tory inadequacy and then the third and crucial part is to put forward a radical agenda for change in this country um, I suspect that the reason that's the third part might be because it's never going to come but <laughs> <laughs> any day now wait, waiting for the third part of the Labour strategy but, looking you know, for a third I yeah. think <laughs> always always looking for a third